Okay. Welcome everybody. Uh, Wednesday, August the second. I gotta correct the date. Sorry about the meeting yesterday. I had some internet issues. So moving right along here. So the agenda for today is just continuing where we are. Filament maker, CNC torch table, CB press, power cube tractor. I mean, we're we're like piling projects on, but also at the same time we've got more people. Uh, we've got one new developer, Ahmed. He's from the team Inobay, the Saudi Arabian team, where we're planning a big, nice big 3D printer tractor build for December. That's going to be a major, major event um, in Saudi Arabia. We're going for extreme. And that is 100 printers being built in a single day. So we're they're already prototyping that. Uh, they're getting the materials to do a prototype of one of the machines. And in the meantime, we're continuing the prototyping here in a sense that we're running more workshops. We've got the next one on August 12th. And we're already planning the one after that for uh, September 16th or 23rd. So that's the that's the news. Uh, we're finishing up with a filament winder right now. And let's maybe go right into that. Last week's um, filament maker process was pretty good. The design sprint went well. What we were doing was um, work primarily on the spooler part. So this is uh, final CAD assembly by Roberto here. Uh, there's the working page, so there's just a little bit of finishing up to do the next step on the on the whole filament maker being That we want to just refine the bill of materials to update all the links I, I noticed there's a lot of different links from different places, but McMaster car eBay and Amazon Those are three super good easy sources for all over the United States and it might be different elsewhere but for the US eBay Amazon and McMaster car are ready industrial supplies pretty much you can hire at your fingertips now what do we do about prototyping this thing so on September 16 currently we're looking at so looking at uh, let's see where is that page here we've got page number 10 uh, so so the working document okay I, I actually sorry I'm the working document is this and let me share my screen so you can watch this video if you missed the uh, intro here so so back uh, just just a little review here so our numbers are good here we're we can see in general that as far as the development effort goes we're kind of climbing up in general slowly but surely on the going right back into the uh, slide number slide number nine next steps on filament maker Okay, so we did well on the CAD, we're almost finished, I mentioned the bill of materials work to be updated, but September 16th or 23rd, we're looking at a workshop in Augusta, Maine, that's where Emmanuel is, He's uh, he did most of the, well, not most, but a lot of a lot of the CAD, on a, and he was involved a lot early on in the, in the year, he's coming back to the show, we're, we're planning on running a, an event in Augusta, Maine, where, where he's located, so we're thinking that we can expand what we're doing right now so so actually start building larger printers too I think that, you know we're showing everything works we've perfected the prints everything is going kinda on schedule and then what about doing a filament maker day on day two so have an experimental build right after the main workshop where we build our first iteration of the of the filament maker and that would be you know we, we do the best we can we test a lot of the components as far as we can beforehand but it will be an experimental build so we'll we'll extrude some filament we'll have some ABS pellets or regrind that we'll just start making filament and see how good it is and it'll be an exciting event for all of us as we're really experimenting and learning how that that whole process works it's a new thing for us we've never built it but that would be September 16 or 23rd and we're trying to nail that schedule um, but basically every four or six weeks host continue on the 3d printer workshop so we get good at it and and we really nail down all the organizational issues because right now we're still you can say refining some of the sourcing issues I think the sourcing is quite good but uh, just getting more more and more experience on it allows us to just really feel confident and perfect it so everybody else can replicate it just like he's Emmanuel wants to replicate workshops in Maine so uh, filament maker on day two okay so that's that's the big news on um, the very current work the 3d printer a lot of the work right now and right now as we speak I'm printing parts for the next printer printing eight parts for eight so far and uh, moving forward like that getting back to the the more general schedule just look at looking at all the projects that are on board here 
CNC circuit mill, power cube, print cluster, filament maker, CNC torch table, and workshops, and the tractor team just beginning. So let's go through that. So on the CNC circuit mill, uh, here's the latest. So Shane's actually working in the background at Michigan Tech University there. Uh, this is the D3D based circuit mill. Uh, he's working on height, uh, auto automatic height calibration. So so he's actually probing the the filament, uh, pr probing the with with the the actual cutting tip. He's probing the height of a circuit board so he can level the circuit board. So just like we have a a leveling mechanism within a three three D printer. You need to do that same for the circuit maker so you're exactly on the surface of what you're milling. So he's getting maps, finally got the software to work to get out working maps, height maps, so that that height can be corrected, adjusted during the actual milling process. So that's great work. And uh, that's exciting. If we get a popular CNC circuit mill that actually works, this is really inexpensive, just like D3D according to the construction set methods, that could be a great step forward for all of open source and that people have a ready circuit mill to make their controllers and whatever else they need for electronics. And then you can think about the next iteration on that would be a pick and place machine where where the little machine is actually populating the circuit board with your components. So it's a little suction suction tip that places the components right on your circuit board and then that thing is fried, fired up so that this circuit components stick on like surface mount components. So that's that's next next in line okay CB power cube so uh, CB we're well on the way we're moving forward right along the latest some of the latest stuff is extracting DXF files from the overall CAD so Emmanuel has uh, pretty much um, done the whole let's see done the whole like assemble just kind of cleaned up the whole file on the the CB press so you if you look at Emmanuel log everything's been organized into modules using the assembly workbench so everything is constrained such that when you download the whole package you you can work on individual assemblies assembly files and then then he has the workflow just like we want which is that you import the assembly automatically within the assembly 2 workbench there's a there's an update button so that kind of simplifies instead of using the merge like we talked about where we merge files into an existing document there's, that functionality exists also in the FreeCAD uh, Assembly 2 workbench where you update the parts and they, they're all in the correct place. So that's a good workflow. But the next step here is getting DF, DXFs out. Uh, as far as cutting, we need to do that really by, by this week. So there's three weeks left for cutting. Uh, so let's look at this video by Roberto as far as the how you, how you do that. So we go to... Uh, let's go to... Roberto log and take a look at his video. So he prepared a video of the workflow within FreeCAD for how exactly do you do you extract two-dimensional DXFs from FreeCAD. So let's look at it. In this video I'm going to show you how I export DXF files. The first step is follow this procedure from Abe. Um, from Abe, uh huh. So we have to disable the automatic plugin in the preferences of Frica. So I'm going to start Frica. So am I. So feel free to do that um, as we go through this. If we go to preferences, then import export. We can see the XF options. So first, we have to we have to go to draft workbench, and now we can see the the XF options. These two options uh, are usually marked. So I unmark those options and then apply. Okay. Now. Uh, you go to this link and look for your version of Freak. I have the uh -huh. 16, so I download this file. Okay, so draft exporter module. Okay, here I have the downloaded files. These files, um, I copy them and put 
on your FreeCAD folder. You have to show the hidden files to see the FreeCAD folder. And here you just paste those files and replace. Okay. Now I recommend you to restart FreeCAD. Okay. Okay. Now you can open the file you want to export as a .txf file. Now you have to go to Draft Workbench and select the object and choose the proper standard view. This is uh, the right one. And go to Draft Menu and Shape to the view. Now, um, this is the 2D view. You can see it's just two dimensions. Only two dimensions. And it looks correct. So now we just select this view and export as a DXF file. Mm -hmm. Out to disk DXF. And you can open the file you just exported. The DXF. And here we have a DXF file with 95 shapes and it looks ready to be cut. Yeah. So that's all. Thank you. Okay, that looks like the correct procedure. Uh, there was just one part there where it looked like after the DXF the two-dimensional view was was taken it looked like there was the hexa hexagonal kind of appearance on the hull which we know is a perfect hull not a hexagonal hull but it looked like at the end in this final DXF export that cor corrected itself to a nice smooth circle which it should be so yeah great I mean but as you see that's you got to do a little tweaks got to uh, pretty much download the DXF exporter Make sure you have that. You got to be in the right workbench, and you got to select things. So it's a whole procedure for doing that, but that's good. Once we do that, we go into LibreCAD. So so he's using um, Roberto's using a view within FreeCAD, but LibreCAD, which is another open source but two dimensional drawing program, you can download that LibreCAD, uh, and that's how it looks. This is LibreCAD. So you got your you know, your two dimensional drawing. You just import your files into LibreCAD. That's great. Excellent. So what we need to do, so for anyone who's watching the video, and I'm going to try to do some workflow allocations and, and hear the week work and design sprint preparation. We're going to run another design sprint this time at noontime this Saturday. Actually, Emmanuel is arriving here this Saturday to work on the CNC torch table so we can actually get that thing done and start cutting the steel. But um, some of the work for preparation for the, the, the design sprint would be to make sure everybody's got all their DXF files generated so whoever uh, was in the former design sprint uh, make sure all the files are ready to go if you were working on a DXF file like for updates of the FreeCAD a drawing of the CB press please export your, all your new DXFs according to this procedure and put that on your log so um, let's continue so beyond the so that's CB power cube, CB extracting DXFs, print cluster. So Christian is working on like what I'm doing here is right now is you can use one computer to con connect to and control a number of 3D printers. Right now I'm r currently as we speak running 3D 3Ds. I'm gonna get that up to six probably within the next few days. But uh, one single computer can run many of them. But we also we also want to be very efficient on that so we're using a Raspberry Pi to control all the 3D printers so that's what we're working on uh, Christian is still working on that documenting that check out his log filament maker that's we're gonna do uh, just finish some of that work and get ready for uh, the build that's gonna be September so a basked last time like do we have a plan for prototyping the filament maker well yeah uh, day two of the next not this upcoming but the one after that day two of that 3d printer workshop okay cnc torch table 
Uh, great stuff here. Thank you for Germany with love. Oliver, thanks. Uh, the controller arrived. This is great. So what we have, this is the automatic height controller for the, the CNC torch table. And what we have here is both automated capacitive sensing capacity as well as this knob here that you see that you can control the height of the torch manually. So that's excellent. Uh, basically, uh, you can do adjustments with the knob or you can do automatic control. So that's a really nice, nice thing. And this is for oxy fuel cutting, which means that we can do oxy acetylene and Pretty soon, I mean, we're going to get into hydrogen, so oxyhydrogen cutting where you're splitting water, and that's, I mean, that's well-proven technology, so we're going to get into that later, but, but oxyfuel is a lowbrow way to go without using a plasma cutter, and with hydrogen, oxyhydrogen, you can do aluminum, you can do steel, you can't do, do aluminum with oxyacetylene, but you can do aluminum, cut aluminum with oxyhydrogen, so gases are very very good it also in integrates with some of the rest of the gvcs technology we can do oxy a wood gas we have the gasifier right we already ran our engines on it so we can take that gas and do oxy wood gas cutting it's doable we got to do it because that's once again talking about local abundant resources like wood or like water uh, for your cutting gases and with the the splitting of 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 water you you get you get oxygen so we can actually generate our own cutting gas cuz oxy fuel cutting relies on an oxygen lance oxygen going through your nozzle that actually cuts the metal after it's hot it cuts the metal that's what does the cutting it's not the heat it's the it's the once it's hot the oxygen just blows right through oxidizing the metal all right next filament maker let's um Let's just do a couple of comments on that. So filament maker, this we did a couple of weeks ago. This winder part we did uh, last week. And this week, anyone who uh, let's let's try to get some assignments to people who are who are working on a last design sprint. But on the filament winder, Lyman filament winder page on a wiki. This page, Lyman Filament Winder. We have a master, master spreadsheet. Here it is, master index, and that contains all the all the part files and assemblies that we were working on. So, if you go down down the spreadsheet, uh, we've been like a lot of this is done here. The final final assembly, the tensioner is not done. Uh, so, so this one here, whoever did that, and the final one, that needs to be done. So we kind of need two more people on that. Maybe uh, who was working on it? I forget who was working on it, but because the name was replaced with with the link. Uh, so when we do this here, if you go into the actual spreadsheet, in a procedure like that, there was a note as far as who did which part because we gotta want to make sure we keep track of that we did that right in the in a spreadsheet for the role division division of who was doing what and you can see that there's some see the black markings that's a note in there and that says who did it Dixon was doing that and this was Jose but we kinda missed that next time when we do this when we replace our names with our actual work product please put a note which is insert note uh, to to keep track of who actually did what because then I could have picked on whoever was doing the tensioner but I, I actually don't know who did that unless I actually look at the video which is also uploaded too but whoever did that um, please continue on that and the final assembly Roberto if you're working on that uh, as soon as the tensioner is done that tensioner needs to be included in this in this final winder assembly here so we've got the winder here, the little roller that's that's pulling the puller. This is the winder part, and then there's the switch before the puller that turns the puller on and off. So that's where we are. Um, let's see. Next. So mov moving right along here. 
Got to mute Alejandro here. Mute. Okay. Uh, moving right along here. So, what else we got? Yeah, mention this next steps on the filament maker. So let's maybe get into, let's see, the just a couple of notes on the CNC torch table, just to wrap up what all is, is going on, working on a big axis that's five feet long. The table that we have is actually more like six by 12 feet. So we're gonna do more like these axes are, this is uh, five feet here. I think we're gonna extend that to more like six feet by using longer shafts. But yeah, this looks like it's working. You can check out the video. I uh, just mounted the belt and and motors, and I fried the first one. I don't know what's wrong. Maybe I had a bad controller, but I fried the first one. That's a, as far as I got. But we got to get this thing moving. We're using the 3D printed bushings that you're seeing here in the back, all the green ones. That's what's inside them, and that seems to be working. I'm gonna check. Like the, like uh, the friction is pretty decent. I put some WD-40 on the rails, and the sliding friction is pretty low. I think it's pretty easy, such that we can use our regular NEMA 17 or NEMA 23 or 34 motors to pull these but at first uh, we we're just doing the NEMA 17 I'm trying to see if a single NEMA 17 is sufficient to pull one of these axes it actually should be if everything is right so uh, we're gonna test that so that's the torch table as far as preparing for the workshop take a look at this um, am I frozen here. All the materials for 24 3D printers are here. All the wires, frames, that's actually half the frames, uh, PEI surface, controllers, bolts, I mean there's a bunch of bolts, cords, the shafts, the, the 5 16 shafts, um, stepper motors, linear bearings, everything, little heat shrink, some crazy glue, heated beds, and more. Getting ready for August 12. Eight, eight builds are happening so far. We need more people to sign up. Otherwise, we won't have 24 builds, but less. But we are building the six footer, which is basically two of the frames. We, we stack a, two of the frames together with a six foot vertical height to make a very tall printer for tall columnar printing. All right, so. I think with that said, just one last update is you, if you want to take a look at the video of the water system that's brand new from the Seed Eco Home, but we, we're running a rainwater collection, surface water collection purification system, uh, which is very neat. It's nice. You can get water from anywhere, from your roof or wherever, or the surface, then purify it through a sand filter, some charcoal filters, and an ozonator. The ozonator has not been installed yet, but that's what we're doing. And next we're moving on to the biodigester, so that's going to be very interesting. Shit's going to get interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the next steps in the project here, the major major transitions here. So if you look at the roadmap, uh, tractor team is forming. So actually we have a meeting right after this at 1 p.m. with, uh, there's going to be a manual at least, and Ahmed from Saudi Arabia, but... Uh, we're planning for the build that's going to happen in, in September. We're planning on a tractor build that's going to be end of September, like September 30. Probably like a two or three day workshop, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But we're going to start planning on that. And then beyond that, we got to do some power cube work. So power cube tractor, filament maker finishing. Uh, a bunch of projects are on the, on the work log for this week. So for this week, design sprint, we want to go noon to 4 p.m. again. Um... So what we're going to do this weekend is work on uh, uh, the power cube and tractor. A power cube is necessary for the, uh, the CEB press and the tractor. So the power cube is the common ground for a lot of the stuff we do here. Now what's to be said about that? Let's first review the uh, just the work allocation. So if we go to slide number... 14 for workflow allocation. Um, what's happening here? I think the main thing we want to be concerned about is the design sprint. So that's going to be Saturday, August 5. 12 to 4 p.m. Um, 
but whoever can make it, we need you there. And let's go back to design sprint prep. Okay. Um, until the design sprint uh, so for the design sprint, the, the brunt of the work, I think we should probably, we want to focus on a power cube since we need that for August 25, which is the tractor, the, sorry, the, the CB press power cube build. Uh, I think the, the great priority is there to get that going because we're also going to need CNC cutting files for the power cube. Now this time around, uh, we're actually switching much more to CNC cutting on the power cube. Before this, we did a lot of the work with the, the modular tubing, the 4x4 inch tubing. And one thing we're finding about that is it's adding a lot of weight. And a lot of times we're not using the power cubes, like the structural power cube is so that you can use it as a structural component. But we haven't we found that we don't really knew, need the power cube to be a structural component, so we're going to go much simpler. We're going to lighten down the power cube and, and do it by CNC cutting more. So the CNC cutting part, the great part about that is actually the increase in build speed. So if you cut out a frame, I think um, it becomes clear from the 3D printer work that the frames are very easy to put together and weld together. Uh, it took me, for nine frames, it took me two and a half hours from the cut metal to lay it up, weld it together, and even up to painting it. Two and a half hours for nine frames. That's pretty fast. So uh, the CNC cutting does give you a lot of speed ability to do it really fast because when you make when you cut a, a cube with CNC, then it's automatically self-aligning. That's the big part. Otherwise, when you have linear tube members, Ali the alignment part takes quite a bit of time. So for speed of build and an extreme manufacturing model, the C CNC cutting is really favorable. It allows you to lay things up immediately and, and uh, bond it together with magnets, magnet holders, and just tack and weld into place. So we can do that. Uh, and I'll prepare a document so, so I don't have a working document on a power cube for that, but we'll break down once again, just as normal, we break down the power cube into different modules and people can design the different modules, work on the individual modules getting the CAD, starting by doing some, some re, you can say reverse engineering. Uh, all the power cubes we've done so far were in SketchUp, so we gotta basically generate the free CAD models. SketchUp does not really cut it anymore for us. Uh, we wanna get all the full CAD within free CAD so we can begin on that and designing some of the, the design updates to the power cube. So um, let's see who do we have on a, on a team here. So who can make it to this week's design sprint? I am sharing my screen so can you guys not see it? Yes I can. Okay. Okay sounds good. Um, Yep, we don't have a lot of people uh, coming this Saturday. We'll see who we can round up. I'll, I'll do a follow-up email for whoever can come up. Okay, so Roberto can do it. Um, Emmanuel will be arriving here at that time. Maybe I could get him on a design sprint just a little bit, um, since he'll be just arriving at that time to work on a CNC torch table. And I'll see if any of the Saudi Saudi team is going to be available for that. Um, but basically, as far as the working document on that, uh, we need to I need to prepare that, just the basics. And as far as the work that's to be done for, for by the by the weekend, the, some of the the finishing up, the only thing we have for people is make sure you generate your DXF file. And then the two people who are working on uh, filament winder, um, if we can finish that. So that's all I can say for now. Um, let's see. 
what else do we have that we can really dent dent our time into right now? Uh, any questions on what's what's kind of happening for this weekend or where we are with the current status? Because, I mean, on a filament winder, just uh, wrapping that up would be a good good thing, and then starting to refine the bill of materials for easier sourcing. And I also want to ask if anyone on team, like I don't know, Abe or anyone, would be willing to assist and prep for the the actual filament maker build meaning um, just actually order all the materials um, what I can do is I can wire some money over to whoever but but that would require that um, you would do a little bit of prototyping on the actual filament maker winder so you'd have to have some time so talk to me if anyone else can help on that otherwise we can try to see um, as we, as time goes along if anyone frees up to continue that project and actually do the some of the physical prototyping thing that would be nice is uh, you know what works well is people come in here for short dedicated project visits like one or two weeks to factory farm to actually do the work and then come up with some good finished product just like uh, for example Shane did with a CNC circuit mill so we built that we did some initial tests it was pretty good so that that works pretty well um, as far as the just to just to update on where we are in this Roberto so here is where we are can you continue working on this to integrate the the switch into this and see if we're gonna be ready for pretty much refinement of the um, the bill of materials yes of course I, I will uh... I was going to do that, but I, I couldn't find uh, the sub-assembly number six. Sub-assembly number six? Yes, that, that's oh, the, the, the tensioner. The right. tensioner switch. Right. Do you know how that looks? Yeah, I mean, that's who, whoever this was... My this is my boss. I work on it. Okay. Who? That's Alejandro. So, yeah. Roberto, maybe you guys can work together. Um, I know that file is just merely started. So that file needs to be... I know it's been uploaded, but it's just the filament winder, the, the switch piece. It needs to be put on a base, put the screws in, put the two switches in there. Um, yeah, so that, that needs to be be done. And if you guys can work together on that, that would be good. Yeah, yes. yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that would be good. So maybe if you guys, um, can you actually, if you go online right now, does it work for you? To, what happens when you go to eBay.com? Do you actually do you have eBay down there in South America? Um, yes, I. But uh, the products is, are usually uh, shipped from U.S. or China or right. Europe. Right. But the, what I'm asking about is that um, get the links so that we can do U.S. sourcing and, and ship it to somewhere in the United States. Um, can you guys maybe, if you guys are working on this, finishing up the assembly, it would make most sense if you guys continued on, maybe with Abe. If Abe joins that effort since, since he's been working on that. But go through the entire bill of materials. Like if you look at uh, like purchasing links here. For one, there's a bunch of items missing. And we just simply have to, have to make some selections and uh, do that. And the other ones that are here. Yeah, I guess some of the gear motors. You know, like there's a particular company that sells that. You know, if I click on that, for example, we've got Marlon P. Jones and Associates. Well, what I would suggest is see if there's anything like that that looks just like that. It might have the same specifications. Like, for example, the same. it would have to have the same shaft size. It would have to be 100 RPM, 12 volts DC, since that's what we have. 
try to see if we can find all of that on eBay if possible so that I mean that just simplifies just a little bit in the sense that you're going only to one like less shipping sources which does matter if you have so many parts um, but see if you can do things like that yes uh, I yeah can. yeah so that's the winder and the same is to be done for if we go to the Lyman filament extruder page I believe that page has both the master indices so master index for the extruder master index for the spooler yeah it has those two so we need to pretty much go back through the ordering links and try to simplify it as much as we can and also not miss things like if there's little connectors or wires try to select like one wire type that would work everywhere or like one connector type if possible just try to simplify it as much as we can but you know like for example when we look at the master index for the extruder if I look at it briefly I see all the main components but for example okay I see the wire I see wire connectors um, but let's see for example for the connectors if I click on connectors it shows me well, it just shows general connectors. I don't know which one to get, right? So that has to be made specific. We need to basically select, okay, which one do we use? Do we use a couple of them? Do we use just one? Or do we get like a like a bunch of them in one box that has all kinds of them that actually will work for all the connections we need? So a little bit of refinement like that needs to happen so that the person who's finally ordering, they can go through it and go through it one by one and can take them a quick time as opposed to having to go through the detail um, that level of preparation needs to be done that could be done remotely to the point where somebody actually sits down and orders it online so yeah that will be the next step but uh, I would say that in general for where we are on here I mean we've got the the full CAD almost on the extruder we're pretty complete and the critical part is once we go to the actual sourcing and build that we've got all the printing files and sourcing files. So those those files in the master index can refer to 3D print files that we actually print. Um, so, so in a purchasing link, um, maybe we can go and paste, instead of the purchasing link, we can paste in the, the actual printing link um so that just that one column has everything and it's it's verified but yeah we got to just complete the um up to line 36 that's all the parts after that it's assemblies but up to here for example that that all needs to be filled in mm -hmm. yeah so please continue working on that now let's see who else we have here. So Dixon is working on the video. He's coming here to do some video for the 3D printer. When we have the workshop, where he's preparing for that. Um, let's see who else we have. Christian, I would call out possibly if you can show up for the design sprint. Abe, if you can show up. Antonio for the design sprint. Joseph and Alejandro. Cedric kind of disappeared. Israel would be good for you to show up. Um, Io and Will, once again. Yeah. Um, Let's see, what are some specific things? Anyone who's watching this this meeting, I think perhaps before the design sprint, if people can <clears throat> just take a look at the... I mean, I think the filament winder and extruder, getting that bill of materials absolutely completed. If that work can be divvied up, I mean... The way that more people can collaborate on that is because you, you you see the links being pasted into the the spreadsheet, so that can happen pretty much 
uh, with any large large number of people because you see that okay it's either done or it's not done if it if the, the spot is blank it obviously needs to be filled in so uh, until the design sprint I would say work on the filament winder and, and spooler the filament maker overall links to all the CAD source the, the sourcing files for actual purchases and um, I think that's it in the in the working document let's see if we go to the, the actual working document we were doing the whole let's see where's our um, the main working document yeah if we go to I know that some of the last pages in here was the we should have the overall exploded part diagram as some of the last product okay this is the master master exploded part diagram this along with uh, 28 just some, some more parts we should have the people that are available to do this in the working document for the filament winder we should have the equivalent of this this as far as we know is pretty much complete for the the extruder part uh, like all the switches are labeled just about every single part is is accounted for and that should be reconciled with the master index um, if we go to the filament winder equivalent we don't have that so we need to we need to do that and a good place to do that would be I think we can work right in the design sprint document here it's got yeah we were working right in here as far as the different modules we were labeling it with all the different parts which correspond to the actual master bill of materials so between the or ordering links and a full exhaustive complete labeling uh, that's the work to be done for anyone who's got any time uh, before this design sprint. And let's see where we are by this Saturday as far as the assignments on that. So as you see here, and you can review the actual design sprint video. Okay, the July 29 video is still on my desktop. I actually need to upload that. That was I recorded the whole thing. I'm going to try to edit it down just a little bit uh, to see what we've done here. But we took all the modules like sub-assembly 5, sub-assembly 4. You can see that the corresponding sub-assemblies are in a master index. If you look at the index, we have SA, which are the sub-assemblies one through seven they correspond to the working document and all the numbers the number labels here should correspond to the to the item numbers within the master index so reconciling the master index doing the CAD doing all the labels within a this kind of exploded part diagram and getting all the final purchasing links that's what's needing to be done for the filament winder maker to be pretty much ready for production I mean we're pretty far on it we've we just got a little bit more detail to go but as soon as all the links are in there for purchasing and reconciled with actually labeling the whole thing so that you see that nothing is missing like you can, you can take a look at it and say oh okay well this thing is like for example if you look at this this assembly here you can see that okay what is this thing sitting on it's it, it's attached to something so we might want to for example add in a final master index like a piece of board that we attach it to things like that just little details that at the end of the day someone doing a full replication they should have an exhaustive 
detail list for every single part that's used. Every bolt, nut, and wire and connector needs to be accounted for. So people who are watching this, please uh, work on that. And Roberto and Alejandro are working on some of the final CAD for the the spooler and then the, and the switch. So that's that's about all all I've got. That's the main thrust. Let's let's finish up on the winder, and then we'll start doing full work on. Um, so we'll just maybe like just touch in, just see where we are in the winder and everything else, or maybe not even. Let's 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 just communicate that um, as the work gets filled in. Are we still using our nice 3D printed printer working group on the OSC network? Uh, I'm posting a little bit there. Feel free to post updates there. I do a lot of updates to the OSC Workshops Facebook page too, so you can look in there. Um, but what's our activity looking like for the 3D printer development? That's, that's where we still are. We're kind of under 3D printer development. And why is it telling me nothing to load here? Um, oh, because it probably needs me to log in. Yeah. So. You logged in? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't logged in. So here's here's the, some of the latest thing. This was the dev team meeting. Yeah. I mean, feel free to keep posting the anything there that that should be good I guess we're not really migrating towards that so much we're kind of not posting too much there but yeah please please post updates there as well too and communicate there I think uh perhaps the best like direct immediate communication is just using a simple the the email list that we're using right now that's got like 15 or 20 of us all together just respond to that just like we've been doing and feel free to you know, email everybody, okay, with any updates, updates that you have so that we have kind of a live discussion going on what the current work is. So that would be, I would just say, keep using the email list. And uh, as far as the posting links of ongoing progress, I'd say the network is still a good place, but uh, I'm not sure it's getting adopted overly well. But it is there, so see if we can use it. Um, if it's convenient, please use it. Okay, that's about it for the meeting. Let's let's look at some of the uh, questions on. Uh, so so Oliver, we're gonna be working on. This. So Emmanuel is arriving here this Saturday, so we're gonna be installing this and working on the axes and and doing all of that over the next. He's gonna be here for two weeks, so by the, t by the time he leaves, we should be cutting metal, um, with the, uh, well possibly even with the, with the capacitive sensor. So let's see, um, any updates from anyone else like, um, like Oliver or anyone else uh, working on other things? Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello, Oliver. Can you hear me? Yeah. Ah, let that package reach you just for statistic or for the runtime. When, when did it reach you? Uh, it reached me like, uh, Yesterday is when I noticed it. it. Might have been there maybe like two days before that, but I have a whole box of a in, bunch of boxes. But yesterday is when I picked it up. Yeah, when when yesterday, then it would have needed eight days for the way. Uh huh. So maybe if two days earlier than six days, about okay. that. Yeah, good to know. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know. Um, I can actually look at the the box itself. It might have a timestamp on it. But I think I just uh, noticed it's not so it. Important. I just want yeah. to get an orientation because that's the first time I sent a package to US. Yeah. So yeah, um, um, I've made uh, some preparation in force for you or the guy who want to uh, put it together. Yeah. There. Um, I have um, a kind of checkpoint list which I have put in my. Um, in the discussion page of my log page, okay, there are some some points one should take care of it um, when when putting it together and yeah um, and at the moment I, I and I have put in the CNC 
the control uh, page uh, a, a wiring diagram which shows how the periphery parts should be wired uh, 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 together. And yeah, so um, theoretically, you can build yourself a sensor head and then start it. I would suggest to, to, to at first time mount it on a, on a, on a universal axis, yeah. but maybe not directly on the torch table. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for testing and for getting the feeling of the thing. The firmware um, is so far complete as that there are for, for any peripheral part is an, uh, a piece of code in there and it's so far tested but there's one little thing uh, I have to do mm -hmm. that is at the moment if you turn the hands knob uh, then it immediately balances the distance what you have made so uh, it's it's a bit of meaningless and uh, what I'm going to do is um, there is also a knob function on the on the uh, rotary encoder um, which I still will have to implement and, on, and to ask if this knob is pressed, then uh, it toggles mode between manual mode on one side and the auto balancing mode on the other side. Okay. So you can do by hand some some manipulations and, and I somehow have to integrate a kind of counter into the firmware which counts uh, where he is or for example one I, I can do the program log logic in a way that if you um, manipulate the height manually, then it takes this as the new um, new value for for the balancing as uh -huh. a, as, a, as a wanted distance. Yeah. So it's 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 maybe a good thing to to differentiate between knob is pressed and knob is not pressed, and if mm -hmm. it pressed, then uh, it switches those modes and you can always go into manual mode okay and yeah I think I, I will do it immediately the next days and then upload the code and this makes it probably better and easier for testing than it is now I mean if everything is right connected and mm -hmm. the sensor gets data and so on then it's just doing a calibration loop and going uh, into the default distance or wished height and tries to balance there but uh, it's, it's necessary that it gets some data otherwise it would think oh um, I'm still in a distance of it and then add a step and add even more steps and then it runs into the into the wall or into the border or something and yeah. runs away what, what makes testing a bit tricky so yeah. um, if you're not used to this special situation and um, uh, what brings me to the next point which I mentioned also last week and I also still going to do that is uh, doing uh, the, the end stop and uh, um, that um, the calibration starts with uh, going to the end stop and, and then have a homing and have home position yeah that's what I'm going to do the next day to implement in the firmware um, otherwise if you start experimentating with it uh, yeah, keep me informed and uh, of course I can also assist you online if needed or if you have any questions yeah so, yeah I do have a little bit of question on the this diagram first of all what did you do it in yeah. is it editable I made it with uh, Libre uh, Draw, so I can upload the diagram. Can you, um, so far it's... Uh, yeah, can you do that in the Google Doc? Can you just uh, paste it into the Google Doc? I mean, that way we can, like, online... Like, for example, right now I could make some changes and clarifications to it, so it's collaboratively editable online. It would help because the, otherwise it's somewhat of a, you know, like even though if you have the LibreCAD file, but then it takes somebody to upload it again and so forth, it's much harder to do it real-time editable kind of deal. Or, so, yeah, if you wouldn't mind doing it, that would help because this is going to be here for the rest of humanity. And it needs to change with the needs of generations. <laughs>
right? Yeah. If you don't mind, please do that. And um, the second thing is now, I'm, I'm just a little, uh, it's not clear a little bit as far as which are the very specific buttons that I'm connecting to on the TB660 here. Like, can we add that detail in there? Like, which pin you're actually connecting to? Because I'm, like, for example, here, J, like, uh, I cannot see which. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Is this for example? Yeah, sorry, I cannot hear you. Which which one can you down? Can you see? Um. Oh wait, hold on a sec. Yeah, we're. Well, like for example, if you look at. Can you see my screen? I can't see, for example. You know, like, for example, these four wires, what are they connected to? They're just showing that these four wires, these four wires, these two, these two. The detail should be such that a novice without experience should be able to match, mix and match the correct uh, connections. Like, I can't see... Yeah, like, just, just more detail, like, which pin goes to where. Like, this, for example, J5. Well, what does... Where is that... Yeah, just a little more detail. Does that make sense? Um, at, uh, at the moment, I cannot hear you. You came totally shredded. But uh, oh. what I think what you have said is that you uh, don't know about one special part. And uh, what you want to have in the document documentation is uh, directly a pinout. Uh, yes, yes. Make it it making it clearer on the pin level yeah yes this yes information is basically there if you uh take the the the, the, the shimata and so on the key cut stuff into account yeah. but uh i i already had also the idea that it's maybe better to make that clearer on this document and yeah yeah definitely i, I, I can do that uh, yeah. i mean that's one reason why i um have mounted the uh, uh, knob already there so that there cannot be a mistake but i i will this uh, add the pin out uh, into the into the document there. yeah please do please do yeah. and just the last comment on the ideal code as far as i can see the code should be such that you've got the probe but you can also do manual connection correction right with the knob so say the probe detects yeah. it and you get whatever distance, well, you can make fine adjustments with a jog wheel. That will be the ideal yeah, situation. My, my idea is that with a, with a jog wheel, you uh, can, can tell what, what, you, what the distance want you have. Like if you have a default distance, in this case it's 15 millimeters. Yeah. And you make press testing when cutting and see, okay, maybe I want to go a little bit closer. Yeah. And you can do that with a knob and then it updates the, 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 the distance value the, from 15, let's say, to 12 millimeters if yes. that gives a better, better um, um, cut quality and then it tries to balance on 12 millimeters level. So that's, that's my idea or su suggestion for a first uh, uh, logic. But of course, uh, one can always change the code if some other workflow is more appropriate, but that's maybe the best way to start. Right, right. But for the very, very start, we should be assuming that we're just doing it with the knob and then we can add the the automation. So make sure that you have yeah, one. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's uh, my second intention. Right. Like I said, um, uh, the, the manual version uh, is yes, what you yes, have yes. there when you simply press a knob. Then, then right. you can control, then you are in the models where it does not any more balancing and you can control uh, or, or drive it, steer it out, uh, by hand. Yeah. That's uh, the, the, the older manual version, which is therefore within that, like this. Yeah. And um, the other thing is if you have a certain um, a height and then press and switch into the balancing mode, mode then it simply tries to balance on, on this value and um, from here then will be 
for me the interesting thing uh, how it behaves in, 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 in your situation or with a torch table and then will be interesting to see maybe it's already uh, sufficient for that or we have to do more fine tuning uh, yeah that but but for this I, I need some some input uh, yeah. from your from your side uh, if, if it's if it's mounted on the torch table and so on yeah. okay yeah that, yeah that was the other field where we can do some refinements but, yeah this but is first at all I, I yeah, no, that that's great. That's really good. So we're gonna move right along on that. So this this is really good work. Thank you. And then we'll f provide the feedback as far yeah. as what's happening so here. So if you, if you or someone else starts to doing it, then drop me an email before yeah. that I, I I can be uh, prepared to assist you uh, online or write me a, drop me a mail if you have a question or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to help. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Well, let's wrap up this meeting here. That's that's great. And um, but actually, we're we're starting the tractor work right now. So, whoever wants to continue on that meeting, uh, go to the JITC, which is the meetjitc slash open source ecology. Uh, so, anyone who wants to migrate to the next meeting right now, because a meeting with Ahmed and Emmanuel is supposed to be there. Um, on the meet.jit.c slash open source ecology, which I pasted in. Otherwise, uh, let me quit this here. So please uh, review this this uh, meeting if you haven't seen the beginning as far as the design sprint for this weekend, which will focus on the power cube. And until then, we've got a lot of work on the finishing up the filament maker work. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you there if you want to go to the next next meeting. Bye-bye.